Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Nier Automata, version 1.1a, season 1. Uh, yes, Nier Automata, version 1.1a, aka the Nier anime. Welcome back to the Dojo. I'm Ryu. He's Age, we're back from our Anime Night in the Dojo, and well, this was on our list. You know, we talked about um, what was going on yesterday with our schedule and new set of shows now. Um, if you're new to the channel, check out the trailer. It explains how, why, what we do here. Um, yeah, this came out last March and then had all kinds of production issues and I think wrapped up like two months ago, like right at the end of 2023. But hey. Yeah, it took like a year for it to come out. Yeah, but hey, uh, season two did get announced and 9S is the cover art of that. So this is actually something where I know all the source material. I did like everything there was to do in Nier. Automata and Replicant, but um, <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be kind of weird for me because I don't have to do any speculation at all. None. <laughs> it's going to be one of those weird things where uh, we've had some source material knowledge for some of the shows we've done, like um, Overlord and some Don Machi stuff, um, some MHA stuff that we have source material knowledge on, some stuff like that, Arcane, uh, Stuff like that. But um, this is going to be the first time where I just can watch a show knowing the story and just be like, okay, how are they going to... And since it's going to be different, then it's going to be different because it's not coming from like reading a novel or a, you know, text. This was a video game. Okay? We, we played it. We saw it. You know? So... Yeah. Going into this, it's actually going to be kind of a unusual juxtaposition of how things usually go because usually i'm the one with the source material knowledge if we have any yeah but in, in this case uh i've played the 2b route in near but that's about all i've played like i played through the 2b route and got like maybe a third of the way through the 9s route but i haven't actually played the game to completion or seen the ending or doing anything like that so like i will know most of what's going on this season but not really the story as a whole Right. Assuming this is just the 2B route, then should be fine. Um, but as uh, one of our buddies, uh, Burning Clock, said, uh, yeah, um, oh, you just finished the 2B route? Yeah, you're not even, like, you haven't even scratched the surface of that game yet. And I was like, can't be. That took, like, I I did all the side quests and stuff like that. I was like, no way. That took, like, 20-something hours. Are you kidding me? It, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, getting crunchy rolled early this time. Yeah, I got crunchy rolled super early this time. Solo leveling, they gave me a break. This time it was like three minutes. Like, hey, you haven't started it. What's wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> my, my problem with why I end up only basically doing the 2B route was I actually went a little too hard on the 2B route. Freaking, I put like 40 some hours into the 2B route doing all of the side content, grinding out all of the weapons. I was like level like 85 by the time I started the 9S route. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't go that hard, but uh, yeah. So as for this, well, it'll be interesting to see um, how they retell this story just in anime form. So um, we might not have a huge amount to talk about in the discussion side of things uh, for this. But, um, you know, we'll try to make it work because at some point in the future, we're going to have to do this again for something that we actually have a bunch of source material knowledge on and just have to talk about something differently. You know what I mean? So... This is a... We were talking about possibly doing that for murder drones, but it never happened. Yeah. So, anyway, that being said, uh, let's push some buttons and see how well they adapted this from a video game. Yeah. So. See uh, if and when we get jackass. Right. <laughs> so, here goes something. Imagine not having to create a soundtrack for a show because it's already been perfectly laid out for you. <laughs> Remember this whole sequence. Friggin... In the game, uh... A little real pain in the ass for me because I was playing on hard and there's no saves up until you beat the Goliath. Yep. A 
also uh, that fly-in sequence was pretty much identical. I remember where all the pipes were. So how many times Hedifer can do it? Alrighty then, just to be. Is something wrong? It's nothing. Yeah, that gets complicated later. Don't worry about it. To be, I've identified the location of the enemy core unit. Forms detected. Multiple units inbound. Don't interrupt. So we are getting at least some of the 9S stuff then. Yeah. Be. Target Goliath class weapon detected. So yeah, the actual 2B route, you don't get anything from 9S after the jammer goes up. It was an honor to fight with you. And I mean that. The honor's mine. Yeah, we should do it again sometime. <laughs> Everything that lives is designed or, you know, to like five. Event. We are perpetually trapped in a never ending spiral of life and death. And only the Yorha models are lucky enough to be equipped with this black box, which actually has a really amazing feature. Uh, ma'am? Wait! Yeah, I figured they were going to do that. Yeah, that was an ending that you could do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, as soon as they were talking about getting explaining the endings and going more into detail, I'm like, at some point or another, she's going to self-destruct because that's the first ending you can get in the game. Yep. <laughs> and then the commander is super pissed at you in the text. <laughs> um... That first ending aside, if that's how they're going to show off the endings, like at the end of every episode, that's actually kind of a hilarious way to do that. And I can appreciate it because that was one of the endings. That's the A ending. It's literally, <laughs> yeah, it's literally the first ending you can possibly get, which is as soon as you get to the bunker, you just self-destruct on the bunker. Yep. And the commander, which we haven't met in the show yet, but anybody who's played the game or knows anything about this, which... If you're just watching this like this, your first introduction to the Nier series, then uh, she's the commander of the bunker. We'll get to that. But uh, she has a uh, she's a type, and uh, well, the uh, the way they describe her face, it's 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 perfect. It's like yeah, the, and the commander is just there, you know, with a disappointed face for all of eternity. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if they're gonna do it like that, that's that's a pretty clever way of. Uh, introducing some of the endings because i assume they are going to try to get to the true ending which i believe was f i don't remember all the lettering just offhand because it's been a couple years now but i assume they're going to be trending toward the true ending uh for the show the, the main endings were a through f but then there was a bunch of alternate endings like this was i think like technically like a1 yeah it was one of the alternate endings. It's not actually like a canon ending. Yeah, it's just one of the the weird, stupid side it, that you're playing a video game endings. Like the one, yeah. like for example, it's not really a spoiler, but if you don't want to hear it, just wait like twenty, skip like twenty seconds ahead. But one of the endings is like fish messes with Android functionality, and you can eat a fish, and that's one of the ending. It just ends yep. the game. So I assume that'll be one of the things where that'll happen at some point in one of these things if they continue that. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. But, you know, I mentioned it in the live reaction, they don't have to do anything for the soundtrack at all. The soundtrack is one of the best soundtracks ever created, period. So they don't have to worry about that. They just yeah. need placement. And they don't really need placement because they have where the placement is in the game. So... As long as they don't screw that up, we're good. So soundtrack's going to be fantastic either way. It's great to hear it again. Um, I mean, we got a traditional anime OP. That's totally fine. You know, that's new and exciting. 
I think the OP was solid. I liked what they did with it. This whole sequence was was interesting. Um, but yeah, this was just them covering the first like half hour of the game, basically. Yeah, this was this was the first introductory mission. They they literally got through what I was joking about being like one of the hardest parts on a hard playthrough. <laughs> Which is just getting through this first mission because you can't save until you get to the bunker. Right. You you basically have to know death it. And the the creator was just like, that's just how he designed it. Suck it, nerds. <laughs> yeah, which, which playing on normal, it's not that hard. But freaking on hard, you take like three times more damage. So like even just one hit is like eighty percent of your health. Yeah. So if you if you're playing on hard initially and you're not on like a NG plus or anything, you, you're gonna have a bad time. That intro, that intro sequence is legit on hard. One of the harder things that I've ever had to do. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> it's a very long sequence. And even like one tiny mistake, you have to start the entire thing over again. Because there's no save point until a bunker. Yep. Until you get through that entire sequence that was this episode, you cannot save. And there's a bunch more combat that 2B does do. Like, uh, that, that's some of the stuff that we can... You know, for the anime, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to show off like uh, they could have had like um, like some of the fighting sequence, which they did with these small machines uh, with her fighting them. But like yeah, this, is... like with the big arm, that's an actual encounter in the game that you have to fight it as to be until 9S shows up. Yeah, that's like the first boss of the game. And it happens like pretty much immediately once you're done with the flying segment. Right. So... That's something a little bit different, but that's totally fine. They're not going to show off um, every, like, boss sequence, I assume. They'll probably have certain sequences for certain bosses later in the game. Uh, well, I mean, so far we've seen them, because it was it's the, like, the flight sequence with the giant flying machine. Then there's the arm here as soon as you land, and then it goes, and then the Goliath is the next boss. They just kind of skipped all of the, like, in-between trash between the arm and the Goliath. Yeah. By just having her slide down like the central shaft instead of uh, fighting her way through the levels. Yeah, because <laughs> in the game you actually have to go through that factory and you know fight and play a game. <laughs> so you know that is what it is. Um, but yeah, the the only complaint I really have is I saw that they're using Blender, and you can tell when they're using Blender. Good freaking <laughs> god, it looks so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Blender isn't inherently bad, but a lot of the times people really uh, freaking uh, cheap out on it. Oh, yeah. Like this right here. The, yeah, here it is. Like, holy crap. It looks so much different than the rest of it. It's just like, oh, <laughs> so yeah. that uh, we're not going gonna... to. The flight unit stuff in general is pretty jank in this, especially with just how clearly like freaking uh, inanimate to be herself is in it most of the time. Yeah. Except for when they randomly decide to like actually draw her. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a that's a decent negative because there is a there's not a huge amount of flight unit stuff in the game itself, but still, if they have to do this for like any kind of aerial sequence, oh boy. <laughs> but that might explain why the show went on hiatus and stuff like that, part of the production and whatnot. Um so uh, who knows? Yeah, because... Uh, I never really looked into that. Cause yeah, once again, this, this show took like a year to come out from when it started airing, because it was like, here's three episodes, then we're going to take like a three-month break, and here's two more episodes, and we're going to take another couple-month break. Right. But this aside, I can push this aside. We've talked about this for other animation stuff, like what, what happened with Jujutsu Kaisen this season. We already know the story is really solid. We know that the soundtrack is second to none for the most part. Not even for the most part, just period. Uh, and, you know, characters also solid. Uh, the one thing I'm kind of surprised that I saw in the intro were there were some characters that were showed off that they are part of the game. But if we get to them during what I assume is only going to be the 2B route, which we did get a little bit of the 9S route at the beginning. We did see a little tiny bit of it. Uh, yeah, like seeing his hacking and actually getting like his side of the jammer going off and him having to fight off the freaking waves of machines. Yeah. 
So it'll be interesting to see how they choose to do that, which the 9S route just coincides with the 2B route. It's just two sides of the same coin. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot of, like, I was I didn't actually finish the 9S route, but I got a little ways into it. And for the most part, it really just comes off as just, it's, it's still the 2B route. You're just seeing 9S's side of it. Yeah, it's... It very little changes. The only thing that really changes is it's like 9S is slightly more in charge for his part of the story. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of it is just the same stuff, which is totally fine. You're And in the game, you're playing a completely different character type. Yeah, like the freaking... He's nowhere near as good at actually fighting, but he has the whole hacking shenanigans. Yep. So... You know, they they nailed that sequence though with the uh, the transition, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, Go I was just uh, the only thing I was kind of slightly. I'm not like super, didn't super have an issue with it, but I was kind of expecting it and slightly disappointed that it didn't happen as we didn't get any uh, eight bit soundtrack during yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that that was the one thing. I like I was sitting there and since there's not going to be a huge amount of speculation from me, obviously, because I know the whole damn, whole damn story. And I'm going to do my best to not spoil anything for anybody who's just watching the show. Um, outside of just, like, random bits of game knowledge that are just part of the game, you know. So, uh, but for, for 9S, when you're actually doing some of the hacking stuff, I had it pointed out to me. I was like, what is up with this? And it's just like, holy crap. No, this is just... That's why what this is what makes this soundtrack and the uh, the production between between like what Taro did and then I forget the name of like the composer like the guy behind the, the soundtrack stuff but he's also incredible. Um, the way that they can that in the game anyway and it'll be interesting to see how they do in the anime is the seamless transition that they do from like when Nine S is hacking to going to the eight bit soundtrack and stuff like that. And the seamless transition back was unbelievable because it in game the soundtrack could be anywhere. It wasn't just oh, it's going to loop you to this point. No, it was the whole soundtrack, and it was programmed well enough to just snap back to you know traditional soundtrack, not eight bit. Yeah, with without skipping a beat. Yeah, Every without skipping a beat. Every was, time you transition in and out of hacking, it goes from normal to eight bit mode. Yep, it was it, it was one hell of an experience. It was one of those things that was, it was kind of like that uncanny valley, except for sound. You don't have that. It was insane. Like once I had it pointed out to me, and I started really paying attention to it, I was just, I was unbelievably impressed because I've never experienced anything like that before, and nobody's ever done it since, to my knowledge. There could be something out there I don't know, but uh. That, that was one of the things that was just really blew me away about this game in particular was the soundtrack and how seamless the transitions were between different styles of the music. It wasn't just the 8-bit stuff. They would have different styles of the soundtrack and it was just, it would mesh together and flow unbelievably seamlessly. 100%. Yeah, even a lot of the zone transitions or when boss fights started and stuff like that, it wouldn't just immediately jump to like the beginning of, oh, here's the new track, the way most games would. It like had some way of like correlating roughly like where you were in the previous track to making it like seem seamless to the next track. Right. It In a way, it's a greater version of if anybody's played the God of War, the newer God of War games, when like Kratos gets in the boat with Atreus and like Mimir is telling a story and he's like halfway through telling the story and it's just like, and then Freya, and then you get off the boat and Kratos is like, oh, we'll pick that up later. And then when you get back in the boat, Mimir is like, oh yeah, what was that story you were talking about? Oh yeah, and it picks up right from where he left off. That kind of deal. But to the, the next degree of holy crap with music. <laughs> So, and I know a lot of other games are doing stuff like that with the Kratos stuff uh, and Mimir stuff where characters are in the middle of like telling like a side story kind of deal, like, you know, jokey side story or just whatever, like side content story. And in between like a transition to the main story, like say you're in Uncharted and you're driving from one section to another and like one of the characters is telling a story and they'll pick up the story and leave. They, they have those like gap fillers that they've, uh, they've done those mm -hmm. kinds of things with. Yeah, you still have a lot of those games that have the uh, 
don't have that like smart keeping track of things though like the most recent spider-man game where it's like oh no i got too close to an objective while he was talking i guess now he's going to completely restart the story next time i'm not near an objective right that was a real bummer (laughs) that they had it um but it wasn't as seamless and as good as say like the god of war stuff where um like age said if you didn't in the new spider-man game you ever go to play it it's a fantastic game but if you're wanting to listen to like you know a story from whoever is telling it wait till they're done before you do anything just be your friendly neighborhood spider-man and sit on that roof and listen to the story because if you approach anything else uh miles or peter will just be like you'll have to hold that thought and then it'll start back over later. So you could get like 95% of the way through the damn thing, slam into an objective, and then that stuff would play, and then it would start over. (laughs) So that was kind of a bummer. You know, the the one like minor like nitpick that I could make of that game was that right there. It's like they have the technology, and then it just restarts the story. It's like, ah, damn. Um, In certain situations, though, that's okay. Because... You could get to a point where you don't remember what the hell was going on because you, you know, got to like a side mission and it's like 20 minutes later and you have no idea what the previous character was talking about. But still, (laughs) I think I prefer them just picking up the story from where they left off. It's kind of like when your parents, if they, you know, Crunchyroll playered you, if they read you bedtime stories, you know, and got like 20% of the way through a book, they're not going to start from the beginning again the next night they're going to start from the bookmark Mm -hmm. i mean same kind of deal if you're reading a book same thing you're not gonna gonna pick up like war and peace and get like 20 percent of the way through and gonna go well damn i couldn't finish it and then start from the beginning again (laughs) even if it's like years later you're gonna pick up from where you left off probably so anywho um yeah blender stuff aside the rest of it you know, it was solid enough. Um, I don't really have too many gripes about it. I mean, it's it's all right. You Apart know. from skipping the factory section, this was more or less just a one-to-one cre- recreation of the uh, first level, including, like, actually going pretty well in depth into it. Like I said, like, that fly-in sequence when she very first lands in the arm room. Um, I don't remember 100% the pipe formation, but that was pretty much it. Yeah, I think like the only part where they really changed it a bit was at the very end where everything suddenly starts getting super tight in. Yeah, it's a little bit different and a little bit shorter, but that's about it. it was still handled pretty well. So, yeah, um, again, somehow I landed on this frame a second time, but <laughs> uh, it'll Thank definitely you. be interesting to see how everything is handled um, and just a completely different experience for me personally, since I know everything. It's weird. But I can still find stuff to talk about, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. They even were pretty damn accurate with like a lot of the machine life form attacks and stuff, too. Like the little guys doing the flail or the friggin' uh, the medium life yeah. form doing the big foot slam that he's known for. Yep. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how those... Att- I'm sure those attention to detail will be there for like any like big time fans of the game series, stuff like that. So... Um, outside of the blender stuff, let's not talk about it. We're not going to talk about it again because we don't harp on that crap. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the, like, I I think the, uh, the the biggest uh, offense to the gameplay though, was the fact that, uh, pod was not always firing the machine gun. Right. Yeah. That, that was one of those things where like, (laughs) if you're using the machine gun version of pod, which, in uh in game you have to choose what odds weapon is as you unlock stuff in the game uh it's only much later does he get the big hyper beam thing <laughs> but uh also the freaking hyper beam is a cooldown ability it does not have a 13 hour cooldown contrary to pot in the anime yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i think they captured the uh the this sequence pretty well and uh we'll probably get a little bit more insight into um you see it there at the end like 2b being like upset that 9s doesn't like remember their time together because he only uploaded her consciousness 
and for anybody who doesn't understand what happens here, they these bodies don't really matter to them. As long as somebody uploads their consciousness back to the bunker, they will just get put into another 2B type body with the same memories. And in the case of 9S, 9S body with the same memories. Up into a point. Like their last backup, basically. Yeah, whenever the bodies get destroyed, it's not that big of a deal. Because they can always just re-upload into a new body. And that's how the teleport system even freaking works. It's, it's literally just them jumping from bodies to bodies at different locations. Yep. But uh, the big thing really, yeah, is just managing to re-upload your memories back. So that way you don't lose anything from the death. Yep. Uh, the one thing I will say that was uh, interesting about this uh, this little intro sequence that they had here was uh, she's not using the like cannon uh, like katana weaponry. Mm -hmm. She's using the that's the uh, that's one of the beast swords. I'm pretty so, sure that's Beast King, the yeah. great sword. Yeah, that's like the Beast King great sword. So it'll be interesting to see if they like mix up their weapon types because there's a lot of interesting weapon types in the series besides just. Her like I iconic um, katana and die katana that she uses. So, yeah, like I said, that was one of the big reasons why I freaking spent so much damn time on the two B route was because I was going through and maxing out all of the weapons that I could on that route first. Because one of the uh, achievements is to max every weapon. Yep. And a lot of them you can't carry over to the nine S and do it on the nine S route, but I just wanted to get it done immediately. All right. So yeah, I think that'd be pretty interesting if they kind of mixed it up in the weapon typing. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff that's in the game that uh, I'll be interested to see how they portray it. If they portray it, a bunch of side stuff. Um, how certain characters that are potentially coming up will be portrayed. I'm sure they'll show up and then I'll have to explain some stuff probably, but that's totally fine. I, I want to say what I'm thinking about, but I can't because I don't want to spoil stuff. But there are definitely a bunch of very interesting characters, um, just even in the 2B route to get to. So, One thing I will note is uh, in the OP, uh, we saw like pretty much all of the characters from Automata. But we also saw the twins, and they looked more like their replicant versions than the way you see them in Automata. Yep. And that would be a spoiler, so I can't talk about it since Age doesn't know. Yeah, there's a reason why they're there. <laughs> the uh, the two twins that he's talking about in the intro, you could see them if you watch the intro. Uh, they are. I'll talk about it when we get there. <laughs> yeah, I know they're a pretty damn big deal because I do have, I have seen like all of the story of Replicant, right? But uh, I don't know what the actual relation to Automata is because they only barely show up in the two B route. And as I was saying, they looked completely, completely different for the most part. Yeah, that's where the story gets a little convoluted and ridiculous. So uh, we're going to have to wait on that. <laughs> it potentially might not be this season. There was also several other, not several, but there was another character that was showed off in the intro that we shouldn't get to this season, depending on certain things. So that's interesting that they would show them off. So we'll just yeah, have to it, see. It is kind of weird because, once again, this seem, very much seems like they're going to go for the 2B route first and then the 9S route, but they are also, at the same time, we see in this episode, bleeding some of the other routes into the 2B route. Yep. So it'll be weird It'd be weird and interesting to see exactly what they decide to do. Right. I assume they worked with Taro on this somehow, so he maybe he came up with like a... Um, like a main timeline kind of deal, like a straight shot kind of deal, as opposed to the root stuff. Um, and then they're just going to do like yeah. the comedic stuff at the end of every episode. Like, here's another random ending from the game. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something similar to that. Uh, because it would be kind of weird and hard to actually do a full anime series where e each season is just totally detached, basically. Yeah, so well, well, it is like one canonical story in the game. When you go for most of the stuff, there is since it's a game, you kind of have to do some stuff. So 
I'm sure if they got with Toro on this, they'll figure it out. So, anywho, solid across the board for the most part. You know, once again, the soundtrack's probably going to be the the most impressive part of this. Um, don't really want to harp on the Blender stuff because that is what it is. Just kind of got to look past it because the series is too damn impressive to give a shit. <laughs> so, you got anything else, Age? Um, probably not that I should talk about in this episode. Fair enough. It's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird experience, you know, with Age having some knowledge and me knowing the whole damn thing. This isn't what we do. We usually watch a show like we started solo leveling yesterday. No idea about that show at all. Just that it got super popular and it was a big deal, apparently, and it broke Crunchyroll and stuff. And this, I know everything. I know it all. Uh, will I remember all of it? Probably not, but when I see it, like, yeah, I remember that now. Uh, but it's something I've seen everything, you know. With, with all the content we've consumed over the last couple of years, starting uh, the channel and whatnot, it, it's gotten a little convoluted and remembering stuff like names and whatnot. I'll remember all these names. <laughs> so, you won't have my name problem for this show. Think about that. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. In general, this is just going to be a weird one because it is one where we, where there is all of the source knowledge avail, source material knowledge available, and then, like I said, it, it's going to be different in the fact that I'm usually the one who knows like everything about the show that we do know. All right. The one time this is ever going to happen, <laughs> I better I'd, I'd savor this, right? Yeah. You could put it on the wall. The one time I knew more than age about something, yeah, just. Put it up there by the witch factor thing. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Then my wall is gonna come down when my house floods again. It's gonna be great. Then my, you know, monument to that is just gonna be forever lost. <laughs> so yeah. It, to, be, to be fair, uh, if and when wherever we do get into more, uh, any more like random sports related shenanigans, you're gonna be more knowledgeable than those. So yeah. I have never sports ball. Yeah, true enough. <laughs> so, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond have your watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was Near Automata, version 1.1a. The Near anime? Whatever. Uh, season 1, episode 1. So, have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey, everyone. Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing those like and subscribe buttons. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and we hope to see you again in the future.